Shane Stapleton and Nisha Walder here at Croke Park. We're just after watching Kilkenny qualify for an All-Ireland final yet again. It's going to be repeated last year's uh, decided between Limerick and Kilkenny. 125 to 122 for a finish. What was the most, you know, what, what did you make of this game overall? Uh, exciting, kind of a bit mad, a few moments of genius, a few, un like, like I was saying on commentary there when I was with Radio Nguyen again, it was like, you know, the defensive skills as far as, you know, Conor Fogarty's block, like, and then, like, Owen Murphy's save. Some of the blocking was unbelievable. Some of the catching the air was unreal. And then, like, things like, you know, Adrian Mullins flick to Mikey Butler that ended up being a point for Owen Cody. Mm. And then just mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. Like, just, it was a, a, a kind of a crazy game of hurling. Uh, if you're from Kilkenny or Clare, you're probably pulling your hair out for, for nearly the whole game. But um, just a crazy game. And do you think um, this was a game that Kilkenny won, that Clare left behind them a little bit, or where does it fall? Um, a bit of both. When they, I suppose when the game was kind of that close, it's always a bit of both. But Claire, I don't know. I don't know really what they were doing the first half. Like they were making Richie Reed. You could see he was going to sit back in the pocket and play like that. Like that's the way he likes to play, and that was the biggest difference, I suppose, in the first half. Like that, can he miss that in the Leinster final? Let's say against Galway. Well, isn't that the difference then? You've got Shane Amory playing a sweeper, so it's six v five at that end, which means there's probably more space. Or sorry, well, it should be seven v six really back there. But he just didn't seem to know how to cut out the angles, whereas Richie Reid is playing sweeper for forever and a day. Oh. And I would have thought that Paul Flanagan might have been more suitable. And we understand why Clare played for a sweeper, mm. because of the expected aerial bombardment, TJ Reid and Owen Cody and so on and so forth. But I'm not sure he was the right man. More he's a speedster. But maybe someone like Paul Flanagan, I think, is a really smart player with, with a nice soft pair of hands. Yeah, and, and like, you know, I, I don't think there's probably nearly almost anyone better than Richie Reid playing that role. But... They just kept how much ball did he cut out in the first mm. half? Like it was, it was kind of like you know, and he's he's wearing a yellow helmet. He stands out. Like keep it away from that man. But yeah, from the Clare side, I don't know. But they, they, they made a mistake there. I just like immediately you could see you could tell it was a big mistake. Um, Tony Kelly to midfield. Well, they were looking to upset uh, I, Mikey Butler. I know, I know, I get that. But I mean, Mikey Butler is as fast as anybody else, and. You know, from a Kilkenny point of view, you want Tony Kelly as far away from the goal as possible. Mm. Like, you know, so it means there was times he was picking the ball up on his own 21. Now, I know one of them led to actually Shane O'Donnell's goal, but, you know, from a Kilkenny point of view, you don't want Tony Kelly anywhere near the goal. Yeah, and uh, like, in a way, it's almost like backing off from the challenge, I think. That, that's what I mean. You're kind of nearly too, we were only talking about this before the match as well, you're kind of nearly worrying about how to upset the other lads rather than how are we going to win the game. Yeah. And even even Aaron Chandler, what came on for 45 seconds. Yeah. And like he, yeah, you need a goal. Oh. He, he's the best, one of the best men in the country to catch a high ball. But Owen Cody, he's vaulted himself <laughs> into the hurler of the year conversation. With one five to himself and, and Aaron Glantz, it's a two man shootout. The final really seems to be hurler of the year as things stand. Maybe Burns, or, you know, there's a couple of other lads yeah. maybe from Limerick. But uh, I'd say, as far as Kilkenny are concerned, he's probably front and centre. Oh, he would be. Oh, he has to be sure. Like, I mean, one five from play. And again, like he just. The way he the different ways he can win the ball and how strong he is and how fast he is and he just he can handle himself as well as any forward in the country like anyone going at him digging him my grand he welcomes it and he just gets on with it and he wins and I love the thing he does where like Charlie Carter and DJ you saw him do as well even though he's right handed you know he swaps over leans in and catches it with his pearl hand switches it back and little kind of shimmy and he, he creates in a in like a a split second movement he creates about a yard of space and then flashes it over the bar into the net and even the goal for a second you thought he's going to get blocked here which is a bullet into the goal he was brilliant and for a fella that apparently only picked up the hurl last weekend adrian mullen i thought was absolutely brilliant three points from play yeah <laughs> and again created that last point on cody got a miscontrol and just because he saw class pure instinct just flicks it on like that and Mikey, into Mikey Butler's path, passed into Owen Cody point. But the tackles Adrian Mullen was putting in, the blocks he was putting in, like for a lad who apparently, again, like a broken thumb or whatever it was, but not shying away from any physical stuff. Yeah, and like anyone who's ever broken their thumb before, like your hand, it more or less seizes up if it's in a cast for a few weeks, or that thumb especially, and that's the key part in terms of manipulating the hurling in your hand. So fair play to him. But you think of it like the difference between a, a monkey and us, <laughs> the use of a thumb, like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Makes all the sense. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> TJ Reid, he got 12 points. They were all from place balls, but I thought he did have a big bearing on the game. And Late on, actually, you contrast four times in the first half, Clare had sideline balls, and they immediately gifted the ball to Kilkenny, which was which was nuts. I counted six points that Clare gifted to Kilkenny in the first half. But in the second half, the few times that TJ managed to make himself an option for a sideline cut, one was clipped up lovely into his hand. 
Like just very clever and smart for a lad turning 36 later this year. Just thing, and, and even again, like the amount of times he kind of gets his hurl on a hand pass, somebody hand pass the ball, he gets his hurl to it, or, or you mm. know, he gets a block in, or so, and he just nails every free. I know he missed that one, but it was like on the sideline from about 100 mm. yards away, like that had gone over the American. And even the sideline, Claire were kind of the game was being delayed for a second, didn't bother him at all. He didn't replace the ball, nothing. He just stood back again and ding, old Barry going. And it's all these tiny little margins, like last year. He's again, like he kind of. At this level, like you have to be ninety five percent plus with trees, like, oh, yeah. and TJ always is like. But look, Aidan McCarthy was obviously missing on the other side, yeah. and his free free taking is like those three uh, missed free uh, frees for Clare or placed balls if you want to include um, sidelines or sorry sixty five I should say, and then also in the second half late on, Mark Rogers actually Pass refused one. the free. Yeah, and he just pulled it. Did he pull it on the ground? He just flicked one. it out to to um, to Reedy, I and, think. And it was one you would kind of would have thought like. You know, as the free taker, it's the middle of the field. I know he missed a longer one out before that, but again, that was another kind of 10 yards. And he knocked over back. 465, but it was similar range. It was yeah, literally, yeah. I'd say, five yards behind the 65, kind of right in the midfield, and he passed it. And you're kind of going, like that. Again, like, right, this is this is the responsibility you take on board when you are when you are the free taker. You have to shoot. Mm. You just have to. If it goes wide, right, grand. But don't pass it out to somebody else who's going to hit it wide, like. And Ryan Taylor going off injured in the first half. That big was loss. a big blow. Big, big loss. Big blow. Big loss. Because... Kilkenny kept winning frees close to goal. That was something that yeah. really stood out to me. Wally Walsh, albeit I, I did feel he dived uh, towards the end line there. Now, David Fitzgerald put his hand I, on him, I, but then it was like the whole... I said it, yeah. Over. I, I even said it too there. There was a kind of a split second or two where you thought, oh, geez, he's going to goal here. And then when you realised, no, he, 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 he sold something. <laughs> he sold I know, he's a Kilkenny man now, so he's saying it himself. But look, that, that's the game. I mean, like... But, look, the but physical... Kenny took their man on and kept winning frees close to Mikey goal. Butler. That's the difference. How many times did Mikey Butler do it? Now, I know he, he almost scored what would have been nearly the point of the year when mm. he hopped it off the ground and Tony yeah. Kelly chasing and he kind of... But, uh, yeah, Hugh Lawler's point storming up like that as well. Um, and they were just... They were... Now, having said that again, I suppose, in the first kind of 10 to 15 minutes, the Clare half-back line pretty much took over the game. Like, Kenny couldn't win a ball. John Onley went down. Then he had to go off. Um, Massey Gone wasn't right, clearly. Obviously, yeah, but sure, and you, yeah, sure, did, did. this was the thing I thought starting himself in Adrian Mullen was a huge gamble. And the Adrian Mullen one paid off, obviously. Mm. But Massey, like, look, usually he was brilliant, just he, you'd know, you'd know by him he wasn't right. But, um, starting Connor Cleary yeah. and John Conlon obviously both had, had their injury issues. Cleary's been out for a long time. Conlon, um, he, he picked up what seemed like a concussion against Dublin, so that's probably another reason that they started to. Yeah, and then I, I was actually just going to say there, I got sidetracked there, but when Ryan Taylor went off, I thought nearly, when you think of it, like, what, is that not the perfect time to bring on Aaron Channer? Mm. Like, Duggan was doing untold, as they say. Like, nobody, they had three different ads on him, couldn't stop him from winning the ball in the air. There's where Tony Kelly, Shane O'Donnell come in on the breaks. And, like, yeah, I just, I think they made too many mistakes with decisions they made. Well, this is the thing with Brian Cody, or sorry, Brian Lohan, I should say, in the last year or two, that... What he did in terms of replacing John Connell last year backfired. Not not necessarily picking Key Nolan to mark Aaron Gallan in the Munster final, but continuing to persist with that matchup for so long, playing the sweeper here and persisting till half time. You know, time and again, it seems to be there seems to be a bit of an issue on the line. Now he's hugely popular in Clare, so if he wants to stay on, he will. But there's definitely some questions. Yeah, I just I just thought it was odd, and even Ian Galvin was taken out there today. Um, was like taking full part in the warm up from what I could tell. So I was like, oh, is he injured or not? And then, and then you know, I just, I just I thought that was a strange decision, even myself. Uh, and then yeah, going with a sweeper against Kilkenny, I don't know. Did, do you need look at the difference they made when they when they went away? And next thing, Richard Reid all of a sudden was worrying constantly about who he was marking, and and they had them kind of at sixes and sevens or whatever in the first kind of twenty minutes of the second half. I'd have kind of thought like, you know, trust the lads you have and go with it. Try and beat him, try and make Kilkenny beat you rather than, you know, rather than going with a sweeper and immediately giving them Richie Reid, you know, mm. giving Kilkenny Richie Reid. You're kind of playing into Richie Reid's hands doing that, I thought, myself. Yeah, look at the bench then that made a difference for Kilkenny. Um, Keane Kenny came on, scored a point and well. had an assist. Park Walsh, I think, got a point at the end. You got the last one. Wally yeah. Walsh won a couple of frees, got on a couple of balls. Uh, Richie Hogan, I think, won a free also. Mm. So if you look at the bench for, for Clare, and to be fair, Ian Galvin got a point, David Reedy got a point. Probably didn't get too much more off the bench otherwise. You'd say Derek Ling has done very well there. And actually, the first year post Brian Cody to get to an All-Ireland final. Now, maybe he will have kind of felt like that's a minimum for me. But I think 
outside of Kilkenny, they'd lost players in terms of like over the winter yeah. as we've gone to Australia and so on. Like he's done exceptionally well. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. You couldn't really have asked for better. You you go, you get to a league final, right? Great. And obviously, look, Limerick won that. You win the Leinster, you win the Leinster, and now you're back in the All Ireland final. So it's literally pretty much the exact same step by step as last year, right? Uh, back in All Ireland final, and he has it mixed fairly well as well. That there's so many younger lads coming through that are, but then you can still go back to the older lads who are setting mm. the example. You're learning from the like of TJ, you're learning from the like of Richie Hogan, whatever he's doing, like on and off the field, watching him and Connor Fogarty there again. Like, I mean, like Connor Fogarty, sometimes you're kind of going, like, How is this lad still going? Like, he's an animal, and then gets that block in the first mm. half, like, unbelievable. And again, right, Roger needs goal. to put it in the ground, though. He does, he does, but like. Conor Fogarty came out of nowhere and made that block. At, and it was one of the blocks where the ball was struck, so he thinks goal and phew, hits the hurl, goes out for 65, and you're going, like, you know, just... And then, sorry, and the way Kilkenny are playing, too, that they are really comfortable using... You now, in the second half, there was a few things they did, like, did I didn't like as far as working the ball out. They kept passing it to lads who were standing and kind of straight line passes. Um, but that they're comfortable working the ball through the lines, finding Richie Reid when he's there, and then he uses the ball really well. You know, Hugh Lawler running up and scoring a point. Mikey Butler not being afraid to run up and score a point and then run up and take on the other lads and go for overlaps and moving the ball through the lines. Like Whereas back in the day, it would have been two, three, four. You're standing in there, and when you get the ball, as it has to get out of there, mm. right? That you can kind of mix the two. And they all see, seem comfortable because look, they have the hurlers, but they all seem comfortable actually playing that style. So, like, yeah, look, this far, you know, so far for Derek Ling, it's, it's 10 out of 10. I mean, they won the Leinster Championship without Richie Reid. And, like, yeah, and the manner of which they won it as well, they, like, they, they weren't giving up in that game. Another thing I wanted to say was Clare went ahead by two points. I think it was 19 17 mm. and 54th minute, I think after scoring five in a row. And you thought, right, they're probably going to kick on from here. Kilkenny were struggling a little bit. And then the disastrous goal happened. I mean, fair enough, you understand. You do have to work it out from the back. Every team does. But to get turned over, brilliant work from Billy Ryan to mm -hmm. flick the ball off Rory Hayes is hurley. But that's a disaster for them. But to be fair to Clare, I thought, you know, like we've seen teams capitulate before. They didn't. And Shane O'Donnell, what a goal. <laughs> Unbelievable, some finish. But um, And then just Kilkenny just held them off towards the latter stages. Cody, TJ Reid, a couple of more big lads. Did you actually notice that last ball that... Adrian Mullen caught from the puck out. This led to the final point from Parik Walsh. That it was actually Mark Rogers inside his own 45 going up for the ball with Mullen, but he was so tired or cramping or something like that that he couldn't actually keep yeah. with Mullen, who hasn't played for God knows how long. Yeah. And he was able to stay going, which is some credit to the man. And then obviously Parik Walsh popped it over. Yeah, yeah. And then even little small things in that period of time. Owen Murphy did a really smart thing, I thought. I was saying he wasted 30 or 40 seconds. There was a ball dropping into the goal, and instead of him catching it or playing it, he just let it dribble out wide, walk behind the goal, get the slitter, and then walks back out and then goes to. And you're kind of going, he is like, again, just taking whatever, route, obviously, the unbelievable save, right? Just taking the sting out of the game like that. He pucks it out. Can, can he get a point? And I think they want a free and score a point. And you're kind of going, and that, like that, little things like that, like that's, that's genius. Like, yeah, like to be fair, that can he. Even looking at the back line, Mikey Butler is last year he was a new kid on the block, but the fact that he's doing it for a second season in a row is huge credit to him. Hugh Lawler, again, unfussy performance today, but always looked really safe back there. Uh, David Blanchfield has really impressed me. I have to say, mm. the more and more I see it, yeah. Um, and to do this with Martin Keown not fully fit, Adrian Mullen would probably be better the next day. Um, how are you feeling about the final now as a Kilkenny man? Uh, look, great to be back in it. Like it's like they, they've done, they've done unbelievably well. Like they, they, like today, they were really good. Galway, they were good in patches, and it was a great win, obviously. Um, but I don't know, Limerick are just so good. Like it's just it's one of them things where like it seems like it's a race to second place, kind of in, in the hurling. Like mm. that, it's just that, that they're so good, and it's not like a case of like, oh, well, Kenny aren't any good, or Clare aren't any good, or whatever. It's just that Limerick are so good. Um. They basically have to kind of be as efficient as they were today, if not more efficient, and then be as perfect or as perfect as they possibly can be using the ball. They need probably two or three goals anyway. Oh, easily, yeah. Well, how many goals did they get last year? Two in the final last year, and they lose with whatever it was. They need three goals. Like you, you need you need at least three goals all the time. I think this. And look, they they came within a puck of a ball last year. Um, 
arguably maybe they're playing actually better this year. Yeah, uh, well, they're definitely playing more of a modern style. That's what I mean. Like, they've, they've, so if they can get their game kind of as efficient as possible, um, they have a great chance. But as in, if they if they get everything right, um, what you need again, look, you need Richie Reid to be firing all cylinders. You need Adrian Mullen firing all cylinders. And again, on Cody, do you know what else you need? Sorry, no, as well, is Billy Ryan to come up with a goal. He's been threatening a couple of goals in the last few games, and in the league, he was doing it. It, it, it obviously championship is different level etc etc but you need billy ryan you need john donnelly you need them getting it using their pace using whatever they have creating the goal and you need mossy come back running as fast as he can go as well again it's two weeks times away he at least wasn't injured there today so it's a lot to ask but your look it's it's great to have the kilkenny bank holiday back again boy mm, yeah i'm not sure i agree with that but uh what was it going to say is the um the limerick semi-final win over galway how impressed were you with them and like you know when Nicky Quaid obviously went for the, the contact lens and I think his collar was just adjusted by the physio and not a whole pile more from what I could see. And Galway had gotten a few scores in a row and it's the usual thing. We've seen it, you know, we've seen it inside camps and outside camps. He he did that. But I've heard a few people say now that Henry Shefflin was kind of really animated on the sideline. And did that kind of, like, obviously Limerick took over from then on. Did that reaction, which they knew would probably happen, they knew Quaid would do something like that at some stage if they got a run, it was nearly spook and unsettle his own team reacting so passionately. And you know, like you have to keep cool heads in these situations. This is the thing, and, and kind of nearly going into the game, talk about it, mm. expect it to happen, yeah, right? Expect it to happen, right? And funny enough, now, uh, the goalie in the court, Amy Lee there in the in the Camogie match, she did the same thing when mm. Kenny started clawing the way back, that she did the same thing. Um, and the ref stopped the game, whatever. And John Donnelly went down there today when Claire went to point up, and Colin Lyons just waved his hands like that. No way, yeah. But he came off within a minute, so he must have there must be something wrong with him. He came off like a minute later, but he wasn't having it. I wear contact lenses mm -hmm. and I've been wearing them for around 11 years <laughs> playing hurling, and never once in a training session or a match in all that time have I had to adjust one, never. So it's one of them things, and I saw people kind of arguing with a this. Pop has been sold it, I, it is like, and look, you know, it's this and that. Other, because of the rules are technically but realistically it probably i saw actually someone say on twitter now as well it should probably be treated as a blood sub at this stage and say go off and somebody else has to take the puck out then well i think the puck out should be taken immediately we're not waiting for a goalkeeper to come in whoever you want to take the puck out yeah, yeah. and you know tough luck yeah if it has to be fixed fix it but not on our time yeah exactly you know, like i i just think because look it's cuteness it's this and it's that but when it happens kind of there's a pattern of it happening again and again and again it's kind of like okay like come on you know but but like anyway back to your point sorry Shefflin maybe maybe I mean like I said like you should be kind of getting ready for this stuff you should expect it really mm. um are Limerick as good as ever and this despite not having Sean Finn and Declan Hannon and Keane Lynch not being at his best sure they obviously are like look if they can win Munster and get to another and final again and kind of win like beat Galway with Galway only scoring what five points in Second Almost half. forty minutes of hurling. Yeah, it was six points they scored from the twenty fifth minute on. That's what I mean. Like that's that's a bit mad. And again, how do you beat them? How do you break them down? You have to out physical them. You have to out hurl them. You have to out think them. You have to you know out out use the ball at them and you know outscore them. And out JP McManus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'm know. Joking, I'm sure, joking. Look, you know, you just. Uh, it just, it, it's really hard, but yeah, they are, they're as good as ever uh, because they're doing it now with players missing as well. So you're mm. kind of like, look, it's a strong... Everybody has players missing. Everyone has players injured. That's just the way the championship is now. They can manage it better than everybody, obviously, because they have such a massive panel. Kilkenny have done well to manage it to get to the final as well. Um, so are they as good as ever? Yes. Isn't isn't it kind of fitting that Kilkenny are the team to try that are in the position <laughs> to try and stop the four in a row? Yeah. I was only thinking about that this morning on the way over. I was like, God, wouldn't that be funny if they did it? Like, you know, because when they stopped Cork in 2006 from doing three in a row and whatever, like, and they're the last team to do four in a row and the argument of who's the best team of all time and who's the greatest team of all time. Totally different game, totally different sport at this stage. So, you know, but it is fitting and it's great. And look, at fair play to Derek Ling and his management team, Michael Rice, Peter Barry and everyone else to have. Like, they kind of, to be honest, I wasn't myself expecting them to get to the final this year, but, but they've been... They've been playing really well this year and they've done enough to get there. Okay, well, thanks very much, Nisha. Uh, keep your comments coming in. Let us know your thoughts. We'll have the show live from half eight in the morning.